Joining us to discuss the U.S.-Africa Summit is the Deputy Assistant Secretary in the Bureau of African Affairs at the U.S. State Department, Bisa Williams. Thanks for joining us. So you have 50 heads of state from Africa here in Washington right now. What is the point of this summit? That's right. Thank you for having me. Actually, we have 50 heads of state plus the head of the African Union. So we have 51 leaders from the continent. And the purpose of this, uh, of this unprecedented gathering is really to get the leaders of Africa, both from public sector and the private sector, and uh, leaders in the United States, our president, most of our cabinet members, as well as American businesses, to take a very close look at Africa and figure out what are ways we can we can better develop our relationship. We also right. have people from the pub, um, private sector, from civil society coming as well, I should have mentioned. Is this just about making money, or are you going to address things like terrorism, corruption, human rights in Africa? Our relationships in Africa, our relation with Africa is very diverse. We are, of course, going to want to do business, but yes, common, common interests of security, of food, of health, all of these things are going to be topics that are on the table. I was wondering about things like human rights and corruption because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what kind of message does the U.S. send to the world when it invites people like Mbasago of uh, Equatorial Guinea, President Dennis Ngesso of the uh, Republic of Congo. The message we send is uh, the message that we send all over the world. We know what our principles are and what we stand for, but we think the best way to get those messages across is really to have a face-to-face -face conversation. And you can do that over an extended period of time uh, on specific topic. I mean, this is, this is really an opportunity to have a leader's conference. So it's not invite everybody to a ballroom and have a photograph. But it's the men are, and women are sitting at the table across from each other and really examining some things. But you don't have Robert Mugabe here. That's true. So you're choosing your dictators, are you? No, we don't have Robert Mugabe. But we do have some representation from Zimbabwe. And I think it's very important to state that. We, um, we have a dynamic group of young people from the Young African Leaders Initiative, which I hope you will get to talk about. And we also have some business people from Zimbabwe and civil society representatives. Okay, you know, there was a piece in the Washington Post uh, which went this way. It says Obama's two predecessors had a single policy achievement that defined their approach to the region. In the case of Bill Clinton, it was the African Growth and Prosperity Act, which reduced some of the trade barriers between uh, the United States and Africa. Uh, for George W. Bush, it was the president's emergency plan for AIDS. What is this president's single policy achievement? President Obama has built both on the African Growth and Opportunity Act as well as on the PEPFAR program, and he's expanding our interests and our activity in, in Africa even further by building on the Young African Leadership uh, Program, which is now the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program. We are also, he has also launched the Power Africa Initiative, which is going to double the access um, in Africa uh, that Africans have to energy, to electricity. Uh, we are hoping within, matter of fact, uh, we are planning. It's beyond a hope. We are we are working on and planning to uh, bring up to, by 10,000 megawatts uh, the amount of uh, power that you have going on in Africa. So, um, and we've we've gone uh, much further in reducing um, uh, infant mortality uh, in in Africa through through our health programs. So, I think President Obama will ha should be proud of our, his his legacy that he's still building. Uh, a legacy he's building, you say, but it, this summit comes very late in his presidency. I mean, he's just got three years left. It's his second term. Why so late? President Obama made a promise last year that he was going to invite the leadership this year, and he's keeping the commitment. Are you playing catch up with China here? No, and I, I'm glad you raised that because actually we're allies. We are friends with China, and we think that what China's doing in Africa is very important. Africa, for, for Africa to catch up, with the rest of the world, a lot needs to be done. And so uh, what we're trying to do is tell our American businesses and tell, um, tell the African leaders exactly what are all the benefits that we have to offer? What, what aren't they looking at? And we're trying to look at, the, for example, the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act. Um, what have we gained through that? What have the Africans gained through that? And how can we make that even better? Uh, so I think this is really a working level, I mean, a working opportunity for leadership to, to say, these are the ways we need to help refine our policies and, uh, and strengthen, strengthen our connections. Right. When you talk about building business with Africa, building trade, expanding trade, I mean, yes. will the United States attach any kind of conditions to the people it wants to do business with uh, by saying, look, these are the values that we represent and we want you to carry out? You know, it's going to be done within those values as well. 
yes, we trade within the law, we trade within our value system. So yes, do we want to, we, we, do we want to, what we're trying to do is help explain also what our American companies are looking for. They want to, they want to invest in a country where they, they know the playing field is, is level, where they can be guaranteed that, that, that uh, there won't be corruption so that their, their, their assets, their investment is well taken care of. Um, and they want to go in a place where they have um, the real opportunity to grow their business, uh, to decide on their own management, to make the kinds of decisions that an American company would make here. So yes, do we apply those same standards? Uh, we do. But we also feel that we bring to the table uh, lots of benefits. We bring the state-of-the-art technology. We bring um, the possibility for upward mobility and for enhancing of uh, capacity building uh, and training of staff in ways that no other country can compete with. Um, and we build uh, the, the American ingenuity and just uh, the drive to perform and expand in ways that I think that the African business leaders and, and um, uh, elected leaders are looking to expand. Yeah, I'm just wondering how you do you deal with leaders, you know, who engage in massive corruption. This crony capitalism is endemic in Africa. It's led to, you know, wide income disparities. You take a country like South Africa, a very prosperous country. The rich are getting richer. It's a very small group of rich who are getting richer. The poor, mm -hmm. massive poor, uh, amount of poor are getting poorer. Mm -hmm. And your question is? And the question is, how do you deal with leaders? How do you deal with something like that? You put that on the table. We have very frank discussions. The United States doesn't stop being the United States just because we're having a conference. Right. So we're not afraid to address those issues, right. and we have. And corruption, actually, and rooting out corruption is one of the sub-themes of, of, uh, of two of our sessions, both right. in the business forum as well as in the leadership forum. But an important thing also to pay attention to, uh, there, there is tremendous, there's tremendous power in allowing the businesses to talk to each other. African businesses want to work with American companies. And that sort of collaboration and putting on the table the possibility for growth, I think is something that the African leaders aren't going to be able to ignore. And um, for ex our Power Africa initiative, for example, yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a method, it's a mechanism through which we plan, to, we plan to expand the amount of electricity that's available. But you do that also by pointing out what's going on in the regulatory regime, what's going on in this country now that's not allowing this, what do we need to have changed, and how can we help you change that? So a lot of our business encouragement tools are also economic reform tools that are, are now building up steam and t having influence. And we're seeing that impact. We're seeing it even in Nigeria. We're seeing it in Ethiopia. We're seeing it in Ghana. Right. I just want to pick up on one thing you talked about, and that was counterterrorism operations in okay. Africa. The United States already has a substantial number of troops in Africa. Are we going to see that increase? As you know, I, I was our US ambassador to Niger. So I know a lot about what the kinds of interaction and the kinds of threats that the region is facing, that the continent is facing, and particularly the Sahel. Um, so no, our idea through this conference is not to all of a sudden increase our U.S. footprint. That's not necessary. What we are doing, though, we are working closely with the African militaries. We're doing lots of training. And we are facilitating discussions um, between countries and among countries that, that aren't necessarily even in the same region, but are confronting the similar kinds of problem. For example, um, following France's lead, actually, the United States participates in a group of countries that have been meeting to talk about Boko Haram. Um, it's important that you get the right people in the room to talk about what's going on. It's important to talk, to let's perhaps compare how are you how are you dealing with the Boko Haram threat, vice how are you dealing with the AQIM threat, and what are you doing in in those two contexts, even against Al Shabaab. So there are going to be opportunities to put all that on the table and look at it, but that doesn't automatically imply, and there's no expectation that it will lead to uh, an increase in U.S. troop presence. Ambassador Williams, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. That's it for this edition of The Heat. We would love to hear from you, so please send us your questions, comments, and story ideas to The Heat at cctv-america.com. Once again, that's The Heat at cctv-america.com. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching. There's now even more ways to follow CCTV America than ever before. Get real-time updates on our various social media platforms and catch up on your favorite clips from our news and programs.
Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and let us know what you really think.